Hello, so I spend pretty much all of my time reading books or thinking about books or buying books. <laughs> so today I wanted to recommend you some books. So I headed over to my Instagram to ask you guys what your most specific book requests are and I'm gonna try and give you a book recommendation that fits the criteria. And so the plan is to give you as many extremely specific book recommendations as I possibly can before I run out or drop dead. Whichever happens first. So firstly, nice jury one to start with, a book discussing disease and death. Okay, so for nonfiction, I would recommend When Breath Becomes Air, which is a gorgeous title. And it's a memoir written by a doctor who was dying of cancer and then it's finished by his wife when he sadly passed away. So you get two very interesting perspectives. And then for fiction, I would recommend The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Tom Tolstoy. It's about confronting your own mortality and the inevitability of death, but through a character who had previously lived in a very reckless, self-absorbed, frivolous way. So it's very interesting. Um, this person just said, I'm trying to get over my situationship with my ex-boss. <laughs> this is not free therapy. I can't help you with everything. There is a limit to my powers here, you know? A romance to obsess over that isn't poorly written and the female character is awesome, alone with you in the ether. This is the most beautifully written romance book I have ever encountered. It is so gorgeously lyrical, absolutely overflowing with metaphors and analogies about love and life and falling for someone and protecting yourself and hating yourself. And oh, I was just enthralled by this book. And also both characters are complex and fully developed outside of the relationship, which is so important for me when I read a romance book. Like if they only exist in the confines of that relationship, I lose interest. Whereas these are two fully fleshed characters in their own right. A book for someone who wants to read fantasy but always gives up on fantasy books. I am going to recommend to you Hex by Jenny Fagan. This is super, super light fantasy. It kind of just has like fantastical elements because it's about a young woman who is on death row in the 14th century. And then there is a modern day woman kind of coming back in time to communicate with her. And she's on trial for witchcraft. It takes place in a real historical setting in the Scottish gallows. And there are also those kind of magical elements. So I think it's like best of both worlds. It's a feminist tale. There's not crazy world building. It's very approachable. And it's like 120 pages long. So it's very doable. And hopefully you won't get bored of this one. For the young woman who feels a need to escape to Europe, there is a book called Voyeur, which follows this woman who has moved from London to Paris, and then she's kind of disillusioned, and she ends up getting a job as a writer's assistant in the south of France. And it kind of revels in the sultry heat of a European summer, and gossip, and family drama, and uncovering secrets about people. It's a romp, some of the writing is really lovely, and yeah. I think Voya would be my recommendation. This person would like a book about current affairs in a page turner fiction book. So I actually just finished this poetry collection called Mannerism, which starts off with poetry about the black male experience in modern Britain, then expands to kind of talking about pop culture and the double standards that are held when people talk about black and white celebrities, and then the different ways that black and white people are treated in general in the media. And then you kind of have this like domestic tragedy. So you kind of have both, you have like current affairs bubbling away in the background, but then also the family drama kind of comes to the forefront. On a different note, I would also recommend Detransition Baby. This is a really nuanced and fascinating book, which addresses a lot of the conversations and discourse surrounding transgender people, but in a really tender, loving, affectionate, open way. It's also a story about a trans couple, one of whom has detransitioned and then got someone else pregnant. And this scenario where you have a trans person, a detransitioned person, and a cis person just facilitates so many insightful conversations. I thought it was really, really well done. And Tori Peters is such a talent. Something to read in between big books. I would say Exteriors by Annie Erno. She just won the Nobel Prize for Literature. And it's a really great introduction to her work. It's basically just a selection of observations about human behavior. Most Mostly it takes place on the subway. Each vignette essentially documents something she's overheard or witnessed in public. And then she analyzes that. She's kind of observing strangers and talking about the things you can learn from people you don't actually know. So it's a fun little portrait of a diverse range of people. It's a quick read and a study on a kind of microcosm of society at large. How do you find new release hardback fiction for an affordable price? Through Book of the Month, who have very kindly sponsored today's video. Book of the Month is a book subscription service where their experts 
vet hundreds of books and then pick out their favorites each month for you. They curate a list of their top picks. This month includes Romantic Comedy, Camp Zero, Advika and the Hollywood Wives, and Adelaide. You can pick the one that you think sounds fantastic and then it will be delivered to your doorstep, which means you can spend less time researching and more time actually reading, which obviously, as you know from this video, that's what I'm all about. They also promote a lot of new and emerging authors, so it's a great way to discover new fiction. And it's also risk-free because you can skip any month, any time, and not be charged. And so that is how you can get new release hardback fiction for a great price, including your first book for just $9.99. You can use the code Jack at bookofthemonth.com. I will leave my link down below where you can get that discount. You're welcome, my friends. There's four more great recommendations from the amazing people at Book of the Month. A story so bizarre that you question the sanity of the author. Oh boy. Have I read a lot of books like this? For me, it's going to be Bunny by Mona Awad, which is this surreal, bizarre story of a group of girls who are all literature students. On the surface, they seem to be kind of sickly sweet. They only eat sweet foods that are really sugary. They wear summer dresses, but it turns out <laughs> they are actually in a cult. They meet up in private, they turn bunnies into men, and then murder them. The book just spirals and spirals and spirals and leaves your jaw hanging open. It is so twisted and weird and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good fun. Like you can't look away from this. On a similar note, someone is looking for strange books that are fun to read. I am going to go with Death and the Penguin, which is a book by a Ukrainian author. And it's a fun kind of alternative to spy novels. It's like someone who gets himself caught up in a situation that he then gets kind of way too deeply involved in. And it also features a pet penguin. So what more could you want? <laughs> For a non-fiction pick, I would maybe go with something by David Sedaris, who is a great writer. He writes these really genuinely funny little stories about his life. You know, they're just anecdotes, but they read like a stand-up comedy sketch. I read When You Are Engulfed in Flames, and I thought it was wonderful. It's like a really easy, fun read, but also quite strange. A book with beautiful descriptions of the sea. I would go with Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Armfield, because this book is just beautiful descriptions full stop. It also happens to feature the sea quite prominently. <laughs> it follows a lesbian couple, one of whom was in a submarine accident where the submarine basically got accidentally submerged at the bottom of the ocean for a very long time. So that's one of the timelines. And then the other perspective is her wife who is then nursing her back to health when she returns. She cares for her so deeply, but she's struggling to recognize the person who went off on this expedition. So tender, so quietly beautiful. And the writing is just sublime. You just want it to like wash all over you. Books for an introvert who relates to Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, you <laughs> you understood the assignment when I said weirdly specific. Here's the one who's really into like science and maths, right? Hmm, maybe I'd recommend Counterweight. It's this sci-fi novel about a contraption which links the Earth, like this little island on Earth, to space. And I hope Donatello would like that. I don't know. Crazy cat lady vibes. I mean, it's gotta be she and her cat, right? It's about a range of women in a local neighborhood and their pet cats. And you learn a lot about their kind of mental health. This book wasn't necessarily for me, but I could tell that anyone who is like crazy into cats would probably love this. A book to read on a train ride across Ireland. Hmm. I think it's gotta be small things like these, which is quietly devastating. It's about a small town in Ireland around Christmas time. And a man called Bob Furlong, who ultimately commits a very selfless act. And it's an important insight into an overlooked part of Irish history. There were these institutions which were facilitated by an oppressive church, which housed fallen women. And this book kind of addresses that, draws attention to it, and yeah, it's just stunning and handles those issues in such a delicate way. And then I'd also recommend Hearts and Bones, which is a really great little Irish short story collection. A book that makes me feel like I'm inside the color green. I actually have the perfect recommendation for you and that's pure color. I mean, come on, look at that cover. It's about a kind of first draft of the world and it really revels in the natural world. It's very abstract, <laughs> but it's also really great and powerful. On a similar note, we have a book with folklore vibes. Okay, well, we all cry about them not being Era's tour international dates. We can at least read a book that reminds us of a Taylor Swift album. So I would recommend Upstream by Mary Oliver. It's a really lovely collection of short pieces, again, about the joys of nature in this exquisite writing style. It also talks about like the poets that came before. So you kind of have the vibes of The Lakes by Taylor Swift. Honestly, I think this book is the perfect folklore companion piece. I have to say, I kind of, I'm quite pleased with that one. <laughs> not gonna lie. Sometimes I don't even know my own strength. <laughs> Books for when you want to feel creatively inspired. I would say Cursed Bunny because it's very kind of 
genre bending and genre defying. It's a short story collection, but you've got like Western, you have a sci-fi, there's a bit of horror, like there's everything you need in this one collection to inspire you in any way you need. Sunshine on my face, the smell of sun cream and sand between your toes. Oh, I want that. And I want you to read Serious Concerns by Wendy Cope. It just really makes you appreciate life and the little things and everything around you. Something to soothe or fuel my early 20s, I don't know what I'm doing, chaos. I feel you. Cleopatra and Frankenstein follows a range of people in their 20s and 30s and beyond. They all have their own traumas and disasters and chaos. And I think it just serves as a good reminder that no one really knows what they're doing and everyone is going through something. We're all just sort of fumbling around in the dark trying to find something or someone to cling on to. This book perfectly embodies that idea and the prose is ridiculously well written. Poplet that doesn't feel like Poplet. I would say My Dark Vanessa, which is a book that's very much in conversation with Nabokov's Lolita. So that can kind of give you an idea of what the content is, but it's about a similarly very inappropriate relationship. And it's popular, but deservingly so. Although I would look up trigger warnings before you read this. And then I would also recommend Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson, one of my favorite books I read last year. It's a book you will see everywhere. Like every bookshop you go into, you will see this book, but it belongs there. It belongs on every shelf because it reads like poetry. It's about masculinity and being black and music and that weird little mixture of joy and anxiety that you feel at the beginning of a relationship where you're kind of falling for someone but you're not sure whether that fall is going to be a soft landing. It's about giving yourself over to someone else and what you hold back and I just think this is stunning. I can't recommend that book highly enough, as you can tell. <laughs> a book that feels as uncomfortable as putting socks over sandy feet. Hmm. Maybe Tender is the Flesh, which is ostensibly a book about cannibalism, but ultimately is, I think, trying to challenge you to think about your own relationship with consumption and also what humans will do when pushed to the very extreme. And trust me, I mean, extreme. It's very unsettling and gross and definitely the vibe <laughs> I think you're looking for. Maybe Lap Vona as well by Atesha Moshfeg. Although I kind of felt like this one was sometimes shock factor just for the sake of it. It has like patricide and cannibalism and it's just wild. Grotesque short stories. Okay, quick fire. I'm gonna give you Don't Look Now by Daphne du Maurier, Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez, and Bliss Montage by Ling Ma. This features a love story with a yeti. So, I hope that fits the bill. Been in a slump for the longest time and need a book to remind me the joy of reading. I had this very recently. I went through a string of bad books and the book that yanked me back out of that was O William by Elizabeth Strout. She has the most bingeable writing style. Once I started reading this book, I did not put it down again until I was on the final page. Whole thing in one sitting. It's about a woman who has recently lost her second husband and rekindles a friendship with her first husband, whose wife has just left him. Technically, this book is part of a series, but they can all be read as standalone books. Like, I haven't read the prequels to this, and the book still made total sense to me. Also, I would recommend You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty, which is just a romp about this woman who has a crush on her boyfriend's dad and we go from there. I will leave it at that. <laughs> and Florence and the Machine Lyric as your title, immaculate. A book to read while worrying that you've forgotten to water your plants. Okay, if you're this kind of person, I would maybe recommend I want to die, but I want to eat top bocce. If you're a warrior, this book is about a series of therapy sessions, thinking about the way that we think, the way that we catastrophize, the way that we perceive events versus what the objective reality actually is. So I thought this was really interesting. Girl in her 20s with mummy issues. Did you just give me the elevator pitch for Milk Fed by Melissa Broder? This book is vile and disgusting at times, but everything is there for a reason. Like every single metaphor, every single scene that is presented has a deeper meaning and purpose to drive the narrative and create this image of the story. It's about religious trauma and consumption and her relationship with her mother, also her relationship with her own body. It's very, visceral, shall we say. Like, approach this book with caution, <laughs> but I know full well that if anyone told me to approach a book with caution, I'd go to the bookstore and pick it up straight away. So, there you go. A book that would make Harry Styles stop his concert to speak to you. Okay, Harry is a huge Murakami fan, so I'd probably recommend Kafka on the Shore, which is a kind of magical realism book where cats can talk, fish fall from the sky, all sorts of bizarre things happen. Although, I have to say, I don't know if this man will stop his concert for anything. He has been doing love on tour 
for years at this point. We'll be like 85 years old, retired, and Harry Styles will still be announcing new legs of Love on Tour. The man doesn't stop, but good luck having your like YN moment in the concert being like, I'm not like other concert goers. I read, I read Murakami. <laughs> a cozy book about found family. I'm gonna recommend to you One Last Stop. This is such a wholesome book about a queer found family in New York City. There is a romance like in the book, but what I took away from this most is the way that the friends that she has just really care for her and for each other too. And the support that they have for each other where they can lean on each other it's just so heartwarming. These are new comfort characters for sure. Want to tear my hair out, crying out loud, screaming. I feel you. Okay, so You've Reached Sam is a tear jerking story about a young woman who loses her boyfriend but finds out that she can still communicate with him over the phone. And it's this study on grief and how we process that that will just hook you in and then wreck you and destroy you. So have fun with that. That's kind of a YA book. For more adult fiction, I would go with Elena Knows. This book had me weeping in public, which is very cathartic, <laughs> I think. I mean, the people around me probably thought I was not okay, and they would be correct in thinking that. It's an amazing book, which starts off slow. This woman's daughter has committed suicide, and she just can't fathom and process why. She doesn't believe that that would be the case, so she goes off to find out why that might have happened. She has someone very specific in mind that she wants to speak to and the book reaches this climax when they confront each other and it's just this crescendo of raw emotion and it made me cry and I loved it. A book from the villain's perspective, then in brackets, an actual bloodthirsty, horrible person. Okay, I am gonna recommend to you Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. It's her, hi, she's the problem, it's her. We follow this anti-hero who takes erotic pictures of men and then, you know, murders them. It's kind of like the female American psycho. She's just vile and awful, but also maybe a little bit, just a little bit funny sometimes, a lot of the time. Um, the next person would like to know what book to read if they're a fan of Greek mythology? Electra is a really riveting retelling of the Trojan War, but re-centering female perspectives. So it's about the female characters in Greek mythology who are so often overlooked. And then of course, I always recommend Mythos, which is by Stephen Fry. It's basically his guide to Greek mythology, and it's a great starting point, reminder. It's something that I just like to sink my teeth back into every now and then. And it's very concise and accessible and also very funny. Translated queer fiction, please. Love seeing how other cultures represent queerness. Translated from French, you have Lie With Me, which has the most devastating final page I think I've ever read. And this book is about a lost first love. And then No, It's Not a Crocodile is a Taiwanese book and it's about queerness at a higher education institution in Taiwan. Horny, melancholic gay protagonist in their early 20s. There is a book that fits this exact criteria and it is called Acts of Service. She's bisexual and this book is saucy and thought-provoking and questioning and analytical and overthinking and saucy. Did I mention saucy? This could put Pines out of business because it is that saucy. <laughs> There's a lot of sex in this book, but also a lot of melancholy. So there you go, you're welcome. A book for someone who collects tote bags and take pictures of everything ever. I would recommend to you Happy Hour by Marlo Granados. It's set in New York City, it really centers fun. It's about these two best friends who are broke. They run this vintage dress company and all of their money they put into buying oysters and having the most amount of fun as humanly possible. And it's just like a rollick and a romp and frivolous. And it's so nice to just indulge in something like that. So I feel like this matches kind of what you're describing. A book that will make my enemies bow before me when they see me reading it in class. I would say The Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. This book is huge. It's a massive book. So that will probably intimidate people just like straight off the bat. But also it is this sprawling and huge story of a family over the generations. And it's really, really powerful. Okay, let's do a couple more. A book to pose with on my Tinder profile so I look cool and intriguing. Huh, maybe The Woman Destroyed by Simone de Beauvoir. This is three short stories. The first one is one of the best things I've ever read. I feel like if I saw someone reading this book, I would give him my phone number immediately. I would swipe right as many times as I possibly could. A book for my book club. Okay, hmm, books that I think you could 
discuss. The Girl with the Louding Voice is all about kind of girls' education and the power of that. Parable of the Sower is a dystopia by Octavia Butler, which centers the climate crisis. And then Assembly by Natasha Brown is a really slim book, which talks about the experience of being a black British woman who feels that she has done everything she can to assimilate and yet still doesn't feel like she truly belongs. I think all of those books would facilitate a really interesting conversation in a book club. So that's what I'd recommend. Okay, final one, a book that gives you an insight into the intricacies of human life. It's got to be Another Country by James Baldwin. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It covers everything and each individual character is so meticulously and beautifully crafted. The dynamics are so interesting. It's, I don't think anyone understood the human condition as well as James Baldwin did. And this book is the most special thing I've ever encountered. It's set in New York City, you get perspectives from lots of different people all in the same general sort of friend group and they're all going through it. And I, oh, I just devoured this book. I thought it was incredible and kind of game changing. So those are all my recommendations. I've got no idea how many that was. I will put it in the title of the video, but thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you found a book that you're excited to read. Let's do this again sometime. This was really fun. Of course, a massive shout out to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. I really, really appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will catch you very, very soon. All the best, stay in touch. Bye-bye.